color correction and color grading in Final Cut Pro X. Most of the people say that you need DaVinci Resolve to properly color grade and color correct, but I'm not agree. A lot of people say that my color is good, but it's up to you. You need to decide whether you like it or not. And today I'm gonna show you the basics of work with color in Final Cut Pro X. Let's go! What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin from Russia with Love, you are watching No Limits On channel and today my furry microphone will help me to work with Final Cut Pro X in terms of color, so let's dive into it. The first important nuance is to calibrate your monitor. You can just go to a special store and calibrate it there or just call a, I don't know, specialist to calibrate your monitor and my MacBook Pro 13 inch is calibrated, so I know that the colors that I'm working with right here are going to look good good on calibrated monitors and most of the monitors basically. If you work with some complex media like A7S3 10-bit 422 files, you can transcode those files for your computer to be working easier and more flawlessly with those files. You can hit right here, right click and transcode media. You can transcode it into optimized media, which I did before, and it will create ProRes 422 files, which are great files but they uh, you know the size of it is like very big or you can create proxy media and work in proxies basically you go to your view and you simply hit proxy preferred or proxy only and then after color grading you hit optimized or original and review the footage back for the comfort of viewing and for the preciseness of viewing is there a word preciseness i guess that is and let's start off with the scopes as you can see the scopes are at the left of my preview window right here and you can say command 7 to hide them or command 7 to show those this is the rgb parade but we'll go through all of those in a second the first scope we're going to talk about is the waveform it's a representation of your exposure in the shot in a wave form <laughs> basically here at the zero we have our blacks like total blacks and at 100 we have our whites or highlights if we expose not correctly like overexpose you can see that we're over 100 and if we expose even higher you can see that now we're clipping we're losing the color information we don't want to have this let's go back and the same works for our shadows if we underexpose like so you can see that here we have a straight line it means that we have no information in the shadows as well so the waveform is a really good instrument just to a good tool if you want to just to kind of check the exposure levels like at the glance and it's really handy i use it a lot the next scope we have here is the rgb parade by the way you can click here to change histogram vector scope or waveform and here we choose rgb parade so basically this is the representation of your red channel green channel and blue channel in a parade so as you can see right now we have really green tint um, like very green picture and the dress itself is white of course it's a wedding dress and it's represented right here in the upper part of our scope and we'll drag the green back as you can see here and now we have like even spread of all three channels in the white area of the dress it's right here and the skin tone is this red part this green part and this blue part and as you can see we have a lot of red in the skin which is a common thing uh, less green and even less blue so it's kind of a diagonal line from red to blue from upper to like lower part so the rgb parade is a real handy instrument and tool to judge your white balance so if you find something white in your picture and you reveal it right here most of the time the whites are like mm, a little higher exposed like more exposure it's brighter basically and you can definitely see it right here on the picture and now the whites are white which is good for your first color correction not color grading but um, color correction yeah and also here we have vector scope scope or tool and i've explained what it is in my two reviews how to color grade your s-log3 10-bit footage and s-log2 8-bit footage right here in the youtube card and in the description below i'll just show you those videos you can watch those after this video to work with your s-log from sony in a better way and i'll explain it in that video so stay tuned guys 
So guys, now let's uh, color correct and color grade something. As you can see, here we have an S-Log footage, which is the A7S III. And the first stage is to apply a lot, at least to me. And we kind of get back the color information and the contrast a little bit. Then we go to color board and add a little bit of contrast, the higher highlights and lower shadows. Then we'll go to color wheels and make it less warm, a little cooler picture and a hue saturation curve to get rid of some extra red color in my skin tone. And basically here's the before and after. And now let's do it live with some picture, for instance, this one. So now we're trying to use only one tool, which is the color board. Let's hit command six to Kind of show it up and here we have the color board we have the color option saturation option and exposure option also here we have our overall exposure slider the shadows the midtones and the highlights of your picture so let's start off by raising the highlights from like i don't know till 100 then lowering the shadows till like here and the midtones something like so and let's raise the highlights a little bit more. Then we'll go to saturation, we'll add up the saturation like so for instance, and it's a little bit too much for her skin, that is why I desaturate the midtones a little bit, like so. You can add a little bit more contrast to the words midtones, and then we'll go to color. As you can see on our RGB parade, the dress itself, it's not that white, because we see a little curve right here so what we do is we get at the highlights and we pull down the blue channel as you can see right here let's pull it down a little bit so it matches the red channel and then we see that the greens are like not there so we get the midtones and let's try to push it somewhere like here and a little bit more with the highlights like so and this is the right color for the dress almost but now the skin is not looking that great let's add one more color board and let's work with the skin to my it's a little greeny right now so we need to desaturate the green i mean decrease the green add a little bit of magenta which is the opposite as you can see here you add the color and here you decrease the color so we decrease a little bit of green and let's see, something like so is okay. A little desaturation of the face and a little bit more like so. And here you can see that we've used only one tool, which is the color board, two nods, if you will, two layers of it. And let's see the before and after. This is the before, this is the after, the first nod, the second, and here it is. Uh, basically, you can do this with the LUT and it's easier but here you can see and understand how the color board works so let's move on our next tool is the color wheels we'll add right here and say color wheels and here they are so basically these are the wheels the master wheel the shadows the highlights and the midtones here we have our exposure and saturation really saturated and here we have the colors, so we can change the colors a little bit, we can pull it from one side to another. Basically it's working the same as the previous color board, but in a little bit different way. But the best part about the color wheels is this part, the temperature slider, so we can make it warmer or cooler right here, and the tint slider. So as we pull the tint, you can see that we add magenta, or we add green to the picture which is really cool and it's easy to use with white balance in your picture when you simply add this color wheels board and you use the temperature slider and tint slider to basically color correct your image and to find the perfect white in your picture as you can see here we have our white letter right here number two white number if you will and you can see that basically it's almost there we can add a little bit of warmth to the picture and just a tiny bit of green to the picture and here we go and we can use the midtones like so to add a little bit of contrast but the contrast and the exposure changes in the color wheels and in the color board are a little different 
using the color wheels you kind of use a um, wider range of exposure so you pull the highlights you also pull the midtones a little bit and just a tiny bit of shadows but when you use the color board you pull the highlights and you use the tiny bits of midtones and almost no shadows so there are two different options and you can choose whichever works better for you basically it's the same as in davinci resolve with gamma gain and the second uh, option the next tool we are going to discuss is the color curves so let's apply a color curve basically what it does it represents your image in this way so here is the black here is the white point and here is the middle part of the picture you can change it like so you can pick a color you can see that it's right here we can set two more points and work only with this part of the picture whoa be careful but don't do like so as you can see it doesn't work properly so it's just for some minor tweaks and really gentle movements you can change your overall exposure of the picture and work with different parts of the picture right here as you can see but be really precise and careful before and after it kind of pops a little bit more with those curves but be careful not to ruin the picture completely like i showed you right here and here we have the red green and blue channels so we can for instance take this part and pull the blue down so it will be a less blue in the shadows part or to add blue right here it will be more blue in our highlights part also really gently really smoothly without you know being too harsh on this i mainly use this to just tweak a little bit the highlights of my picture and rarely use it basically at all but it's a great tool to have the next great tool is hue saturation curves i really enjoy using this tool and it's really helpful here we have the colors of the picture and kind of the you know <laughs> you can play like so with those i don't really use this part of the image so you can pick the color for instance this purple and if you raise this one up it will change the hue of it if you lower also we will change the hue but be careful because you can get some artifacts it's just some gentle slight movements also hue versus saturation you can basically lower or higher the or raise the saturation of a certain color and you can pick different parts of this color right here so if you want, don't want some extra color to be in you don't want to use it you can tweak it here and yeah you can lower the saturation of purple and you can still here see the cyan color and a little bit of red color right here it's not touched only the purple is being worked through <laughs> out how do you say uh, also here hue versus luma it means that we can change the luma value of a certain color right here or right here also be careful because you can see the artifacts the color of the wall is not perfect it's not evenly lit and we can get some artifacts if we overdo this thing uh, especially in 8-bit footage we'll talk about it in a second about 10-bit and 8-bit footage but uh, in a few words just it's made for some gentle touches gentle movements be careful with it uh, basically i use hue versus luma when i need to kind of brighten up the skin for instance just a little bit so it pops out of the frame more uh, but uh, you have to be really gentle luma versus saturation saturation versus saturation is kind of you know don't really use it uh, basically you also don't really need to use it here's the mix part and orange versus saturation is basically for your skin when you apply this one you can definitely see that let's do like so and let's go to hue saturation curves orange versus saturation let's pick her skin and as you can see we can add orange or decrease orange and we can also pick some parts and do it like so so it's pretty simple and really easy to use most of the time i use hue versus saturation to exclude some colors out of the frame for instance i don't need uh, this color which is kind of bluish cyan i can decrease the saturation of it and we can see the before and after that it's not really distracting me anymore and it's not really here <laughs> let's see it's here let's pick the red parts right here and as you can see we can increase the red or decrease it so you can basically change the 
tint of it and the color of it by adding saturation or lowering the saturation depending on your goals. A lot of photographers are used to Lightroom controls and basically it's really comfortable to use uh, those sliders in Lightroom and my colleague and friend Eric Lenz has, in, uh, has invented, just invented, <laughs> created a plugin for Final Cut Pro X which is the Lightroom controls for Final Cut Pro X and here we have our basic controls, camera calibration controls and HSL. So let's put those on and let's see how it works. It costs $35, Eric did it by himself, so he developed this plugin and I really enjoyed using this plugin because I did a lot of things in Lightroom Classic and you can uh, check the link in the description below if you're interested and uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool product, so let's see what it can do. So here we have our basic controls, like in Lightroom. Here we have the black and whites, the rigger, switcher, whatever. Uh, also here we have our temperature slider, like in color wheels, basically. The tint slider, also like in color wheels, we can change the tint of your picture. You can even keyframe it, which is cool. Uh, exposure slider, just overall exposure. Contrast. Mm, be careful with contrast guys <laughs> just slight tweaks slight tweaks slight movements the highlights of your picture the shadows of your picture the whites that are the brightest parts of your picture the blacks which are the darkest parts of your picture also the classic vibrance tool to make it pop like so for instance and saturation and it's too saturated <laughs> let's do it like so Mm, nah, not that much, like minus nine. Yeah, it's okay. And the classic HSL, which is hue, saturation, luma. And here we have different color channels. So we have magenta, purple, blue, aqua, green, yellow, orange, and red in hue level, in saturation level, and luminance level. So you can basically work with those, but be careful, guys. So let's try to tweak the blue in a hard way and the aqua in a hard way. And now you can see that we've changed this a little bit. We desaturated those uh, or just changed the hue a little bit. And let's do it in the opposite way. And you can see that now it's kind of towards magenta in the sky. If we do it with uh, saturation, we'll just desaturate those. So green and aqua and blue right here. So now it's desaturated. And if we add saturation right here, it will be much more saturated right here, as you can see right now. So let's do it like so. And also here we have our luminance values. So we can add luminance to those color or just take it away, basically. But as you can see, you have to be really careful with those. So these are the controls and now the camera calibration control. For instance, if you have some tint in your shots, you can change it. Let's make it like so. A lot of magenta in the shadows right now and now a lot of green in the shadows right now. So you can tweak it to be in a perfect spot. Also here we get our red, green and blue and also the saturation of it and the tint of it, which is great. Big thumbs up. For the plugin. Thank you, Eric, for participating and for sharing with me this plugin. Once again, link in the description and let's move on. And now let's talk about further tips that are really useful for color correcting in general, not only in Final Cut Pro X. It's really important to match the color of two shots between those. Uh, let's see this shot and this shot. They are not really graded, it's Cine 4 from A7S 2 but you can clearly see that the colors are kind of matching. It's a little warm and it's not that bright. The brightness is kind of matching and the color is kind of matching. Imagine if we had something like this, a little warm color, and something like this. Uh, let me say like this, a little cool color. So it looks moody and okay separately but when we switch to the other shot it looks like from another universe so it's not really correlated correlating connected to the shot before so our goal is to match the shot before and the shot after the shot you are color grading right now and one more important tip is to color grade your footage and then have a rest like 15 or 20 minutes you go somewhere you drink some tea or you just go outside have a walk and then you go back to your computer 
you just uh, you know use the curtains to block the sun and mm, precisely and really carefully watch through the footage and if the colors are matching between shots that's important because if you upload your video at the first glance you might have noticed some mistakes after you have uploaded the video to your client or to youtube or whatever so be careful with this one more piece of advice from me guys is the order of your effects or boards or wheels or whatever nodes if you will so basically it comes from the first then the second the third and the fourth and so on like nodes in the, the tree in davinci resolve so the first node the second the third and so on so what happens if we drag the lot to this part as you can see it's changing everything and we don't want to have this so first we start with the correction of your exposure so if it's too dark we raise up the highlights the shadows the midtones if it's too bright we lower the exposure down then we work with color board and with white balance and tint so we kind of find a good white balance point and then we add look uh, something like green tint if you want to have something like in matrix or something uh, i don't know teal and orange like in transformers by michael bay or whatever but first we color correct so we just make it even and good and then we add a look and the same works for the lot you add a lot first and then you tweak the lot so it looks good to your eye if you're working with log footage especially you can clearly see the way i did it in this shot so we have some color information right here and right here then i add a lot and we almost lose the info right here but i wanted this to look like a silhouette shot and then i added a little bit of color board and just boosted up the contrast and saturation and now it's looking like like fire in the sky which is cool to my eye at least and i guess one of the final tips for today is using the command c to copy the effects and then to paste the effects to your other clip you can use shift command v and you will see the paste attributes you can basically change it right here transform color board crop uh, speed ramping and all that stuff you can use it to maintain without speed ramping and to stretch to fit like with speed ramping basically and changing the speed i'd say and let's paste it like so and as you can see it's pasted the lut and the color board command z to unchange it and you can also do it like option command v and instantly paste all of the effects the retiming effect also the audio effects the color board the crop everything so if you need to kind of paste a ton of effects and you know that they are the same all around use option command v if you want some specific effects you can use shift command v and choose from this part of it and to remove attributes you can simply go here edit remove attributes remove effects is removing all of those and if you say remove attributes you can choose remove only the custom lot and it will be removed so guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you did smash the like and subscribe buttons uh, as you did before <laughs> i guess i really appreciate it guys here is my instagram by the way and if you have some further questions if you want me to color grade some tricky footage live for instance or to i don't know answer your questions just let me know in the comment section below and let's talk in the comments guys feel free to text me in my instagram for sure i'm really open to it and thank you very much for watching if you did watch till this point it's it's a pretty th you know strong thing to have real good from russia with love you've been watching no limits on channel as i said from russia with love and here are a few videos for you to watch and maybe the instagram was here i'm not sure <laughs> thank you very much guys See you in the next video. My name is Alek Nikitin. Bye. Take care.